What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. My husband and I have been traveling full time in our renovated camper, our tiny little renovated camper for the past five, almost six-ish months at this point. And some of our videos are all about sharing what we're learning as we're learning it here on the road. And as we're getting into the colder months, I wanted to talk about some of the things that we've noticed, the biggest differences that we've noticed with RVing in the fall compared to what we saw over the summer busy season. Back in the summer, we traveled all out west, going to some really touristy spots. We were in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Northern California, places that you would expect to find big crowds in the summer tourism season. Now, in the fall, we've been out east since mid-September. We were up in the Northeast and we've sort of worked our way down. As I'm recording this video, we're just outside of Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I thought of doing this video because it started to get cold where we are, even though, you know, we're not super far north anymore. We've had a few mornings recently where it has been close to frigid. So let's start on a positive note. One of the biggest differences between summer and fall when it comes to RVing that we've noticed is campgrounds just aren't as full. For the most part, there are way less people this time of year. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with the fact that kids are back in school, uh, so you don't have as many families in the campgrounds, especially during the week. The reason we like it that campgrounds aren't as full is because it's just a lot quieter. You typically uh, have more flexibility on the type of site that you can pick. It's not like there's one available and that's the only one you get. And you just feel like you're more out in nature, especially if you're staying at RV parks quite often. You sometimes feel like you're crammed in there and when it's busy there's just a lot going on uh, in the fall things slow down a lot and it's just quieter and that sort of brings me to my next one your neighbors are going to be different in the fall compared to the summer or even just in the off season i'm sure this goes for winter and spring as well as i said you don't have as many families so our neighbors during the busy season the summer travel season we were next to a lot of families people with kids and now it's mostly i would say retired people we actually don't run into a lot of younger full-timers very often i don't even remember the last time we did it's typically people who are close to retirement or have recently retired that seems to be the people who i'm chatting with while doing laundry and who i'm saying hello to as they park right next to us another big difference when it comes to rving in the fall or really any cold weather compared to the summer you're going to go through propane a lot quicker than you did over the summer especially if you have a propane heating system in your rig. We could go more than a month with our two propane tanks over the summer and that was because we were boondocking a lot, we were running a refrigerator off of propane, and we were also cooking with propane, but that was about it. Now that we're running our heat more, we go through that much faster, and it's not always super cheap to get those filled up or if you're swapping them out, so just keep that in mind and make sure one of them is at least somewhat full so you're not running out of propane and it's freezing cold and you can't run your heat. Something that uh, people have mentioned to get around this too is to not use your propane. Um, for heating your rig just to get like an electric space heater and then just use your propane for other things like cooking. And that sort of leads me into the next thing. Condensation has been a problem and this is something that we didn't deal with over the summer because it was just warm outside. Um, condensation builds up of course when it's cold outside, it's warm inside your rig, it gets on the windows, it gets on the glass. So we do have a small dehumidifier that doesn't do a whole lot to be honest. So a way to avoid this could be don't use your propane heater because that does create moisture. So if you're looking to avoid that condensation, like we are currently, just use an electric space heater. We haven't gotten one yet, but we may get one down the line um, if this continues to be a problem. Another thing about RVing in the fall that you don't deal with in the summer, freezing temperatures. That can be a real problem. The campground that we were at last week sent out a notice telling people to please keep your faucet dripping if you're hooked up to water because they were concerned about their water lines freezing. So maybe not cold enough yet that you really have to think about winterizing your rig, but you do have to think about those little things like certain elements potentially freezing up. The next thing that we've noticed about RVing now into the fall is we have a lot more campfires than we did, especially at the tail end of summer. So when you're living on the road full time, um, you don't always necessarily feel like you're camping. You kind of just feel like 
like you're living. So I think people have this idea as though you're gathering around the campfire every single night, roasting marshmallows, making s'mores, and that's just not the case. When you're living this way, you're not like on vacation, so you don't feel the need to do those things every night. But now that it's getting colder, we're doing it a lot more than we were in the summer. And I think that's just because with colder temperatures, you wanna sit outside and warm up by the fire, or even when it's not necessarily cold at night, it's just more comfortable at night now than it was in July when it was still 90 degrees at seven o'clock. You don't wanna go sit by the fire. Now when it's 50 or 45 degrees at that time, you wanna go sit by the fire. So we've been making a lot more fires and I guess we've been spending more money on wood. We also did recently get a, a little portable propane fire pit that I'm gonna show you guys in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. Another big change for us now RVing in colder temperatures is we are not as limited on where we can stay due to our air conditioning. So we don't have to think about having electrical hookups quite as much to run our AC. When in the summer, we don't have a generator. So if we wanted to run our AC, we had to be hooked up to 30 amp electric. We're not running our AC now, so we don't have to think about that as much. And that's allowed us to stay at more like Harvest Host, Boondockers Welcome, those type of places. I should note that we can still run our heat without being hooked up to electrical connections that doesn't take nearly as much power. We just have to make sure we have propane and that our batteries are charged enough uh, from our solar to be able to run our heat. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> now the question, do we like camping in the fall, living in an RV in the fall? And the answer is yes. We like that it's quieter. We like that the weather is a little bit better depending on what part of the country you're in. It's really scenic. It's, I mean, it's absolutely great. So don't think when summer ends that RV season is over. If you've been hesitant to take your rig out in the fall, I would say absolutely do it. It's definitely a different feel, a different vibe. Um, it's cozier. It's a little more comfortable in some situations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what types of things uh, you have done to stay comfortable RVing in the fall or even into the winter. I know we've been getting a lot of questions from people saying, when are you guys heading south? It's a bit complicated. Uh, we have some things in the works right now that I'll be sharing more about in some upcoming videos. Our winter is gonna look a little interesting. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Don't forget to drop a comment down below, give this video a like, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one.